Hi, this is Sean Blackwell from Bipolar or Waking Up. From the time I began researching mental disorders online, I recognized that there were a number of different approaches with regard to treating disorders, each with their own fans and critics. And at the same time, I realized that I couldn't completely align my own work with any of the approaches I found because each seemed to have some blind spot or limitation that just didn't fit with what I was discovering when trying to help people heal their disorders. However, eventually I came to see that although each approach had its limitations, each also had something beneficial to offer. A kernel of truth, you might say. I began to see that if I could put those positives together, not in a compromising watered down sort of way, but in a genuinely integrated approach, that I might end up with something very powerful. And you know what? I did. So here are the four approaches that I've borrowed from which form the foundations of the Bipolar Awakenings Healing Retreat. While this may come as a surprise to some of my long-term subscribers, the first approach that I borrow from is mainstream psychiatry. Sure, their chemical imbalance theory is total nonsense and the side effects can be brutal, but like it or not, psychiatric medications have the ability to bring people back from non-ordinary states of consciousness that our society is simply not prepared to deal with right now. Psych meds allow people to maintain their families, go to school, hold their jobs, and stay at a jail. So as much as I really don't like psych meds, I can't deny their benefits for people who simply could not function without them. And as you'll see in our healing program in the next video, that we've found that the techniques we use are effective even when you're medicated. So there's really no need to fight with your psychiatrist and family if you want to heal. Now you can heal first then slowly come off meds when you're genuinely feeling better, as opposed to simply dropping them and praying that another relapse doesn't happen. The second approach that I borrow from is psychology, and that too is far from perfect. The trouble here is that of the people that I've met who've had bipolar disorder and went to a psychologist, very few of them were able to completely heal. The typical once a week talk therapy session is just not enough to heal a deeper disorder. However, on the plus side, the transpersonal psychology of Dr. Stanislav Grof brings an entirely new theoretical understanding or map to non-ordinary states of consciousness, and it's from this theory that I get most of the ideas for my videos. In addition, transpersonal psychologists also bring an added level of professional support by validating spiritual experiences in non-ordinary states of consciousness that psychiatry just dismisses as crazy. In a nutshell, if you've had spiritual experiences in your episodes, then you should be seeing a transpersonal psychologist because they're the only ones who really get it. And while talk therapy on its own is not enough for many of you, it can be very helpful when integrating experiences that you've had in non-ordinary states. Third is the peer support movement, which you can see in action on websites like MadinAmerica.com or The Icarus Project. Here the focus is on recovery through community support, allowing people who are having anomalous experiences to be emotionally supported by someone who's already been through the system and recovered in their own way, however they define it. And all of that sounds great, except that sometimes the peer support movement transforms into a rather combative Occupy Psychiatry culture, which seems more interested in fighting for their rights than actually healing. In fact, many in the peer support movement view their disorder as not a disorder at all, but as simply being different from the norm, sort of like being gay. It's this part of the movement that I really can't get with, because to deny that you have any sort of disorder also means denying yourself the opportunity to use your disorder as a catalyst for deep personal transformation. But despite my concerns with the peer support approach, it's obvious to me that the emotional connection and sense of community created has been a godsend for many people. Attending the Alternatives Conference in Austin, Texas in 2013, the energy and sense of solidarity among a group of people who are often left isolated and alone was very moving. The fourth approach I borrow from is, get ready, shamanism. Over the years, I've had a small but intriguing group of people online who were getting interested in a shamanic approach to mental disorders. In fact, one posting on the internet in particular, what a shaman sees in a mental hospital, went totally viral. In fact, even the Washington Post carried an article titled, How a West African Shaman Helped My Schizophrenic Son in a Way That Western Medicine Couldn't. 
In addition, people like filmmaker and photographer Phil Borges began to explore how shamans treat a shamanic crisis, something most psychiatrists would call an episode of schizophrenia. Phil's new documentary, Crazy Wise, should be out next year. However, for the most part, my experience has been that while the people involved in shamanic practices may have some idea of what's going on, they often lack the theoretical understanding to assist in the healing of someone who has a deeper disorder. To give a few examples, I know of one very prominent shaman from the American Southwest who has a son that takes psychiatric meds for his schizophrenia. And in fact, even the Dalai Lama's brother takes lithium for his bipolar disorder. So it certainly seems that the Tibetan shamans have not been much help there either. And for people with bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, if the shamanic rituals involve plant medicine like iboga, ayahuasca, or peyote, you literally may end up biting off more than you can chew. I know of a number of people who've gone into psychosis and were hospitalized or even jailed after using the so-called plant medicine. Despite the limitations of neo-shamanism, not only do we have a new age culture which is completely comfortable in entering into non-ordinary states for healing purposes, but here there's a clear recognition of the bioenergetic or spiritual component to these disorders. I've personally seen people go into deep healing states during shamanic ceremonies, and I've even had a few myself. So while I don't recommend seeing a shaman for your disorder, I think that a true healing approach must recognize the inherent sacredness of the healing process and validate the non-ordinary healing states as spiritual in nature. And this is something that only shamanism does in an explicit way. To put it bluntly, the healing is done on the other side. The healing is shamanic. Now, at least initially, it may seem that these four approaches are perhaps too different from each other to work together. However, if we look at them another way, we can see that these approaches can work together seamlessly by recognizing that each primarily focuses on a specific dimension of human existence. Psychiatry deals with the physical dimension, applying chemicals which impact the biology of our brains, helping us function in a physical world. Psychology primarily focuses on the mental dimension, encouraging us to talk about our thoughts and feelings so that we can better understand ourselves. Peer support brings deep emotional connection, mutual trust, and a sense of community. And shamanism brings recognition of the sacredness of the healing spiritual dimension. These approaches are the four cornerstones which create the foundations of the Bipolar Awakenings Healing Retreat. A way of healing bipolar disorder which does not conflict with the treatment alternatives available to you today because it incorporates what's useful from all four, allowing for a truly transcendent approach towards your disorder. So what exactly is this healing retreat? Well, that's up next.